Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight we're going to be reviewing Iron Smoke Casket Strength, a limited edition release from the Iron Smoke Distillery in New York. Let's get into it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Iron Smoke Distillery and their casket strength release. So I did specifically go to the store looking for the spookiest bottle that I could possibly find. And casket strength kind of stood out to me. So great job, guys. I know you, your whole icon is skelly. Uh, that's just awesome. I love it. And uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, so Iron Smoke Distillery is based out of Fairport, New York which is only about five hours for me. So I actually could totally see myself taking a ride out there sometime, especially because their tasting room looks fantastic. It's a smaller distillery and it hasn't been around for as long, but it does have a very cool origin story. Now, a musician named Tommy Brunette, who is one of the founders of Iron Smoke, he was out on his deck and he was smoking using his barbecue and he was using apple wood, wood to smoke. Now, he's also sipping a whiskey and he started thinking, hey, you know what? That flavor and that smell belongs in this whiskey. And I think that's just such a relatable thing. Like I ended up getting a barbecue this past year, just COVID and everything. I wanted something new to do. And maybe I wanted to think about something new for the channel. Hint, hint. But I use Applewood as well. And I could totally tell you the smell makes a lot of sense. So, Tommy, fantastic idea. This whiskey is 60% ABV. Its age is only about two to three years. So based off the labeling, we know it's at least two. My research shows me that it's closer to three. The mash bill here is super interesting at 53% corn, followed by the applewood smoked wheat, which is an interesting second grain to choose. Then we've got rye and barley. I didn't get any percentages around these things. And then we have the MSRP of $75, which we'll get to later. Now, the last thing that's interesting about this is that it's aged in 30 gallon barrels. Now, the barrels are great because, you know, 30 gallon bar barrels, let's think about it this way. They are more expensive, but there's more surface area of that whiskey touching that barrel than in a larger barrel. Is this important? Well, maybe I'll do a video on that. But for the moment, let's assume it is. They open up their distillery to the elements a bit, so you're getting a lot of heat shifting. So the barrels, you know, they may or may not be having a whole lot of effect on that whiskey. All right. Lastly, this is a limited edition. As I mentioned, this one is specifically batch six, which was March 25th of 21 is when it was bottled. So this one is, you know, from this year. Pretty interesting. I guess the last thing to note, there's two more things. This bottle, this style of bottle is called an apothecary bell bottle and you've seen this bottle before i guarantee it maybe not with the label but you've seen this bottle before and this is what a lot of craft distilleries use because it's less expensive totally fair no no issue there in fact i actually really like this bottle and i kind of wish more whiskeys would use this only because they're they're small and they fit on shelves better. Also, the the heavy bottom I've just always really liked, and I, I swear I didn't intend on doing this, but uh, if anybody's interested, I sell rocks glasses, and I specifically had them made to have the thick bottom because I love a heavy glass. It's just something that appeals to me. It's got a really deep etching on the front too, so it's just very cool. Anyway, if you are interested, there's a link below. Just go to the shop on my website and check it out there. All right. Anyway, so lastly, there's this little guy on the front. His name is Scully, and Scully is a skeleton smoking a pipe. And Iron Smoke says that that's kind of their their spirit guide, right? They they ask him, you know, what would Scully do? And I mean, it's marketing. It's marketing. I don't care. I am a very simple man. I think skeletons are cool. So, you know, that gets some bonus points for me. All right, let's go ahead and get into the nosing and the tasting here, because this one is an interesting one, and we got a bit to talk about. All right. I felt like I was going to spill it all over myself for a second. <laughs> While I'm pouring here, by the way, I hope everybody has a happy Halloween. If you don't celebrate, I don't know, just eat some candy. Pretend. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and give this a nose. Now, that is an interesting nose. Interesting in a good way. <laughs> I have definitely said interesting in a bad way before. So let's let's knock out a few easy things to smell here first chocolate super heavy on the chocolate um you've got some some bourbon notes but not a ton you've got vanilla 
you've got caramel and a little bit of oak. In fact, there's it's more of like an impression of oak than anything. The vanilla is actually pretty mild as well. The vanilla is definitely getting overrun by the chocolate. But the one of the other main things that you're getting here, and I would love to try to nose this blind sometime among a few other things. Maybe I should have done that prior to the video. I might be getting a bit of an impression because of knowing about the applewood smoke, but I absolutely smell like red delicious apples in here. And I think it's very interesting because, you know, apple wood, it's not like it has the apples in it, but it definitely carries some of that essence. And I don't know, I think I'm just under the influence of knowing what it is. Anyway, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Um, I will note that there are more smells in here. Nothing that I was able to pick out like really all that much. Although actually there was one more. Yeah, and I'm still getting it. So this is something I'll talk a little bit more about in the taste. We'll guess a little spoilers. There is the smell of young corn in this. Um, this whiskey is only two to three years old, which makes some sense that you're going to smell some corn. And it's just a thing you smell. So if that's the thing you're into, especially if you like corn whiskey, then this may be even more up your alley. All right, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Cheers. So a few things to note here, 120 proof, 60% ABV, this is, it does not drink that way, in a good way. You have seen me drink stuff that's way over 120 proof, but you've also seen me drink plenty of 60 percenters, you know, a lot of the bookers are in that area. Um, there's, I believe, a like a Knob Creek. Uh, no, there's a hundred Knob Creek. I don't know. I've had several things that are up that high, and a lot of times they are hard to talk after I drink. <laughs> this one does not have that. This has a very well balanced flavor. It's it drinks like something at least ten to fifteen points lower as far as the ABV goes, which is great because it maintains the flavor of the other essences that are in there. So if I drink this right which I will. The first thing that I taste again is chocolate. Chocolate is such a heavy note to me on this, but it also took me a little while to figure out that that's what I was tasting because there is this young corn flavor that's coming through pretty heavily. And at first it was overbearing. It was like almost all I taught, almost all that I tasted. But then after a little bit, the chocolate started to make its way through. Um, vanilla was very mild, but it's there. The applewood is more of an essence when you breathe in and out. It kind of like, like you get, I, I've said essence a lot, but it, you get an essence of it on your tongue when you breathe in and out, which is really cool. And you don't get that a ton. You don't get that a whole lot. So other than smoke, apple, um, vanilla, caramel, for sure. Uh, there's, there's, it's very heavy, like it coats the whole inside of your mouth. It's very viscous. It's I like a lot of things that I'm tasting here. That corn, though, <laughs> could do without that. I sure do wish this was aged a little bit longer. It needs to mellow out a little bit more. I get that those 30, ba uh, 30 um, gallon barrels are supposed to simulate something that's a little bit older, but uh, I disagree. Um, but that's just my opinion. All right, so let's go ahead and give you an overall here. Although I'm going to take one more sip. Here's the thing. I bought this bottle because it's Halloween and because it has a skeleton on it and it has a pretty clever pun, casket strength. Never even occurred to me about that. I think that's really smart. But here's the thing, $75 for a two to three year old bourbon. That's what we're coming down to. But let's do some math, right? Let's try to give, give this a chance, right? Because this is tasty. And I will tell you that the main factor that is making me dislike this is that it costs $75. So let's do a little math, right? We've got a bourbon. At any bourbon in the US, 40 to 45 dollars, okay? Maybe 50. Let's let's go 50. 50 dollars for X bourbon. Then we have the fact that it is a limited release. It's limited. It's worth more. 55, 60 dollars. Then we have small distillery. Totally fair. Higher prices for everything. 65 dollars. Now we've got 30 gallon barrels, which are more expensive, $70. 
Okay, we can see where the price is starting to come from. And obviously this is all rough math. I mean, $5 difference there, That's that makes a lot of sense. But could I recommend that you guys pick this up over other things that you could buy for $75? Honestly, no. I feel like I'd be doing everybody here a disservice. It is a unique taste. It tastes pretty good. If you can try this, you should try this. And I'm going to give it my rating of try it. But if you can't, I just... I can't in good conscience recommend you guys buy this for $75. I just can't. Um, if you live anywhere in New York, you know, maybe go in and try some support the company because they seem like good dudes. You know, they seem like a good a good place. Their location is great. They are, you know, a bar as well as a distillery. They're they're trying to be in you know, like in an industry that is overrun by Titans who can set their own prices. But because of that, you know, as a consumer, I can get something that I think is just as good for like 50 bucks. And that stinks because I would rather support a small business, but $25 difference is huge. You know, I mean, I think you guys get it. I'm rambling a little bit. All right. So my, my actual recommendation of this is to try it. If you can afford it and you feel like it, buy it. It's a unique taste that you're not going to get really anywhere else. And it does taste good. But, you know, I've already made my case. All right, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween. I hope that, you know, you just have a great weekend. And I guess I'll see you guys. Oh, you know what? Next week, I've got a really, really cool episode. I'm actually really excited to do this because it's just it's going to be a weird one. I'll just leave it at that. But if you don't normally tune into my stuff, definitely tune in next week. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your night. Cheers.